Well, it does feel good to be partially right. Well, hello, hello, my dear friends, my dear viewers. Welcome back to the channel. And today we have this bombastic thing of a chapter, chapter 986, called New Onigashima Project. Now, there is no way I cannot start this video but with that. The new Onigashima project. Yes, a lot of people theorized that that signified a move of Onigashima to mainland Wano. And we were correct. We were absolutely correct. Kaido just straight up went and said, we'll move Onigashima to mainland Wano, to the flower capital to be specific. And it makes sense because the flower capital is the is the central power of Wano. Now, the thing was the execution. Because man, I said last video that I was really surprised for how long Kaido kept Orochi around. Like, because if we think about it, Orochi has given no proof that is any good in anything else that isn't ordering people around. So, Orochi doesn't seem to have any specific combat abilities, or any other set of abilities for that matter, except the fact that he's the, the ruler of Wano. By doing what he did today, Kaido just eliminated just yet another pebble on the road. Orochi was no more than a pebble on the road for him. A necessary pebble, but he got another pebble that he thinks will fill the void of that pebble. It won't, but he thinks so. So, hence why he killed... Hence why he killed Orochi. But... There's a lot to unpack here, so let's move back to the beginning. We have this beautifully crafted color panel. I do love the color spreads. The color panel spreads because it's such a rare sight to have color in, in one piece, bar from the volume covers. And these color panels, they are frequent, but they're not as frequent, you know what I mean? So it's always a rare treat to see this, and we see the three main guys of this alliance, Eustace Kid, Monkey D. Luffy, and Trafalgar D. Law, just hanging about on the backs of parrots, eating onigiri, and an assorted of bento. They, they all have onigiri on their bento. Then Luffy has meat, which is his favorite dish. Eustace appears to have Cabbage? Is that a cabbage in there? I'm sure there's a significance there. And Law doesn't have a bento. Law is surprisingly facing backwards. Like, I know, I know, we are always reading too much into Law and his spaces and positionings. But Law is weird. You gotta give me that. Law is weird. So let's move ahead. Okay, so... We start, and, and I was really surprised with this, because Kanjiro is immediately right there. At the re-renders of Onigashima, Kanjiro is just there, waiting for the scabbards. Like, they appear to have climbed the stairs, and they are now at the top floor of, the, of those stairs, you know, the top entrance. And we don't know what happened with let's say, Law, Beppo, Penguin and Sashi, because we only know that the Samurai are here. The only ones who know are here are the Samurai, the, the, the Scabbards. We don't see Law, we don't see Beppo, Penguin or Sashi, not even in the... not even in the, the silhouettes, you know, the, 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 the third panel, we see the silhouettes. We don't even see uh, Law silhouette or anything, nothing that says, okay, that's Law there, so he is there, so... He might have gone under. You know, there's two entrances he might have gone under. So we don't know. I'm trying to hold in a sneeze, so so just don't so just so I don't have to pause the video. 
We see Kanjo arriving with a force of gifted and two hand-drawn headless samurai. I don't know if the horses were drawn as well, but I guess they were, and my god, like, can you imagine how it would have been if Kanjiro was an actual ally and he had been properly drawing ever since we met him? Honestly, my only regret with the Kanjiro character is that, is because his devil fruit is so cool and it's in such good hands. Because we always thought, ah, oh, such a pity, like a devil for this powerful in the hands of someone who can't draw. But now we know he can draw. We were like, man, I hope he had shown this way before. But it makes sense for the character. But look at that. It just... Amazing. Amazing, really. Then he tells us what happened with Momonosuke. And he indeed managed to cut the ropes. That, that's why he was freed from the ropes when uh, when Kanjuro arrived with him and managed to cut Kanjuro's hand, the poor thing that was beaten to an almost pulp. One thing that I think sounds weird in the in the translation, but it, it's in all of them, not not picking on the official per se. It's the fact that he says I punished him but only enough to knock him unconscious. And then on the next on the next um, panel, he says, To my surprise, however, the boy still lives. I mean, so, if your point was to knock him unconscious, how, un how surprised are you that he actually survived? Because he justifies his survival with Odin's blood. But then we'll be like, I mean, if he was to be killed already, I mean, Odin's blood wouldn't help all that much. He's not kind of, he's not like Kaido, who is pierced by spears and the spears break into compact. I mean so it's it's a bit it's a bit of a confusion here. I love the exchanges. I'm just gonna get this out of the way now. I love the exchanges between Nekomamushi and Inurashi about their their upgrades. So like Kanjiro is just like revealing his, not his master plan, but he's revealing all these things about their lore and whatnot. And, and Inuarashi and Nekomamusha are just in the back, like, <laughs> Nekomamusha has like a gun on his hand, and Inuarashi is like, What's that in your hand? Oh, this? Uh, neither, 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 I got an upgrade. <laughs> and then later in the challenges, like on the next panel, we see Inuarashi with a sword in hand and, and one on his former leg space. And Nekomamushi is like, what the hell is that? Oh, I use two swords now. I use Nitoryu now. And Nekomamushi is like, cool, man. Just... These guys went from being mortal enemies to just being sort of like best friends as they as they ever were in, in seconds. And the first money shot of the chapter is this. Kikunoju finally decides to put back the helmet again, and we see Kikunoju of the fallen snow yet again ready to face against Kanjuro. And he does. Oh, he does. And <laughs> if we are to speculate, something happened in the end, but we'll, we'll get there. And yeah, we see the remaining scabbards getting ready for battle against the gifters, Nekomamushi, Izo, uh, Kawamatsu and Shurodoji, as well as Inuarashi, but he's not shown that. And it's just, yeah, <laughs> it's when that, it's when this scene happens, like, Inuarashi just with his legs sweeping, and, and Nekomamushi like, what, you got one too? <laughs> and yeah, I used two swords now, it's just, it's so cool. Now. We go back to the attic, where Yamato is with Luffy. I gotta say, I found this exchange very weird. Because, as we thought, like, Yamato really is a self-proclaimed Odin. Like, this doesn't come out of any general acceptance or 
anything. For all we know, Yamato has been in Onigashima ever since Odin's execution. I mean, no, we know he got out and went to Kuri, but we don't know how well known he is to the Wano, to, to the country of Wano. So, him calling himself Hoden, and yes, I, I said I was going to, to treat him as a woman, but it's just, to be honest, it's just pretty confusing to go back to the woman treatment after we know after we after the reveal we spent so much time treating him as a man now going back to treating treating him as a woman just feels confusing so him we'll go with him he's just really self-appointed like there's no general consensus and luffy points this out like kozuki odin's the guy that everyone loves there's no way you can be odin and yamato just responds okay fine maybe you're more odin than me then and i was like Hold on a second, boy. <laughs> you know, the, the, this flip floppity, like, it's obvious that it's obvious to me that maybe Yamato doesn't fully understand what Odin was. Maybe he read the diary, sure, he did, he did read the diary, but maybe he just did because there's only so much you can get. Uh, about a person fr from reading about her. Like, we can read all the biographic books, the biographical books we want about certain personalities in history. We can read everything we want about, I don't know, I'm gonna, gonna throw some names. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, George Washington. I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed, that's why those are the first ones that come to my mind. Um, Edward Teach, all those personalities, we can read all we want about them, but there's only so much we will learn about them. Even in a diary written by Odin himself, I believe there's only so much we get from that, or anyone who reads it for that matter, not, not us, because we know how Odin is, we saw him, we have the full knowledge, we as the audience are the only ones in the story, well, apart from the Scabbards, of course. Apart from the Scabbards, Momonosuke, Toki who's now dead, Hiyori who probably barely remembers a lot, and a few member a few surviving members of the of the Whitebeard crew and Roger's crew, they know who Odin truly is. They lived with him. Odin's recordings in his log may not be an exact representation of what he is because the man, you can't put certain things to words. So that's my understanding. Yamato's understanding of Odin and what being Odin means is a bit thwarted. Not in a negative way, mind you, but Yamato is so fixated in being Odin that he thinks he can just proclaim himself to be Odin and everything will be okay, but no. Odin was a man that went from being sort of despised, he wasn't really despised as much as he was considered an annoyance. He, w he went from being considered an annoyance to respected and loved ruler of Kuri, to then again being disrespected and treated as an annoyance at the end and then he went out with a final bang to try and protect Wano Kuni one last time he failed because well he was up against not because he was up against the Rochi or Kaido or anything because he would have won but yeah we all know how that went down but yeah Yamato expresses her wishes. See? See? <sighs> Yamato expresses his wishes to go on board Luffy's ship. And now, I know, I know, I know that that bandwagon has long started this journey. Like, it has been on a two weeks journey by now, at least. So, I know that the Yamato for Nakama is already on sale and well away from port or station. So I know 
and honestly, I want to jump in, but I don't know, man. It's just... Mm. Ever since Dress Rosa, like, Dress Rosa was when these big bandwagoning things began in One Piece, to my knowledge. At least in some communities I, I visit, for instance, the Brazilian community, which is probably the one I follow the most apart from the English community. Like, the, the Brazilian community created a bandwagon of characters in the Dress Rose arc. Honestly, most of them were a joke, but still. And most of those characters ended up forming what we now know as the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. So, but ever since Dress Rosa, I've been kind of on, on a negative side on whenever someone says, oh, this guy for Nakama. And I was like, really, man? Like, people, back then, back in Dress Rosa, people were considering Bartolomeo for the crew. Bartolomeo. Like, you think a guy who idolizes Luffy would leave his crew? That would go against everything Luffy stands. Luffy wouldn't even accept him if he just went, Oh, I'm gonna leave my crew for you. Luffy would be like, you... You what? <laughs> You're gonna do what? <laughs> so yeah, people do say all kinds of things. People said Pudding was gonna join the crew in the whole Hey Kylo. And then there was Pedro, and then there was Wanda, and now Carrot is the most recent one, but the, hey, I can get behind Carrot. Honestly, I can get behind Carrot, being, being an Akama, not, not anything else. But I, I can get behind that, that idea. But Yamato, eh, it just feels forced, because again, she goes, she even says it. <sighs> He even said, oh my god, I, I, need, I need to repeat for a week, like Yamato He, Yamato He, just to get it on my head. He even says it, I follow the proper logic that says, as Ace's brother, you should be giving me a ride on your ship. He has no idea why Odin just jumped on the ship. Like, I'm sure she can't imagine that it was because of the the feeling of adventure and the dread of being locked in the island she even has the shackles that can possibly expose explode we all thought that it was just some prop to represent odin from uh, from his execution but now it seems like a cruel joke from kaido like you want to be like odin sure give me your hands and just pop those in those will explode if you leave the country now you get to feel how Odin felt <coughs> trying to leave the country and wasn't being and wasn't able to do so. If we're being honest, Kaido Kaido gave her gave him a better experience of what it means to be Odin. <laughs> Stay in the island, how many years it takes not being able to leave. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So yeah. Um Yamato appears to be 28 years old. I know this is a number a bit taken out of nowhere, but he appears to be 28 years old. Just there was a there was just a detail we were rearing to know. So yeah, Luffy offers to take the shackles off. He reiterates that he's going to defeat Kaido. Nothing that we don't know already. And Yamato just says, "Go for it. I wish I could do it, but." You know, ever since I tried, ever since I started trying, he's beaten me ever since. So, yeah. And then the big moment begins. The big moment of the chapter begins. Kaido's announcement. Like, there were a lot of theories for this announcement. And it was answered last, last chapter. It's the new Onigishima project. And then he starts detailing what it is. He, once again reiterates the the alliance with Big Mom and they aim to seize the ancient weapons. Little does he know that there's a possibility that one that a version of one of the ancient weapons is right there. There's the theory that that uh, the Sunny is Pluton, so 
there's that. And then there's, Pos there's Poseidon, that's Chirohoshi. And then there's um, Uranus, which we don't know what it is. So maybe this is this maybe this is the arc where we'll find what U Uranus is. So we'll we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Now imagine two Yonkos with the power of the ancient weapons, like that. But honestly, this. This correlates very well with an old theory I had. I did this theory when I when I when I still did videos in Portuguese, I think. Or was or it was the very early videos for the reverie. I had a massive theory for the reverie. And it was really just a massive block of a theory. I don't know. No, I think I think it was when I still did videos in Portuguese. Yeah, no, because because I started in English, like right at the end of um, of um, of Zo. So it was still a theory about Zo and the reverie. It was a joint video theory. Man, that was what the days. <laughs> But anyway, but yeah, in that theory, I said that Kaido would attack the Reverie and kidnap Shirohoshi because he would have found out she was an ancient weapon from Karibo. But that didn't happen, but there's still a chance. Karibo can still betray everyone else and just going to Kaido and like, I heard you want to go after the ancient weapons, huh? I know where one is. Huh? So you let me live and I'll tell you right about that. <laughs> and Kaido will be like, he'll, he'll just pick up his mace and be like, how about you tell me, and then I decide if you have to leave or not. And Karibu just shits himself and is like, okay, okay, I'll tell you everything. She's the mermaid princess of Fishman Island. And yeah, that would make for a very cool return to Fishman Island arc. Like, well, imagine. But yeah, we, we have to... We have to wait and see. And then enters the woman herself with an army of yokai in tow, Olin the Oiren with a bounty of 488 million berries. Whew. Now that Ola has revealed the bounties, I feel like the next time the emperors are, not properly, but the next time we see, for instance, Shanks and the... Um, and teach, and when Ka when Kaido's fruit is revealed, and he has again this this intro card, we'll have their bounties there just because oh they revealed them already. So yeah, Big Mom managed to get Zeus back, and she even captured at least so as far as we can see Carrot and Namia. We don't know if Shinobu's there. She could be, but honestly, I can't see her. But she's probably there, I don't know. But yeah. They are reunited and they pull out the announcement. We're going to claim the One Piece. Now, this is both expected and unexpected. Because if we consider, like, why, what would two Yonkos possibly want after an alliance? Like, sure, Kaido mentioned the ancient weapons, but if we really think about it, the, the ancient weapons are connected to the One Piece. So, they are most likely connected with the history of the Void Century that was is discovered in The Last Island, whose name we don't know. I mean, Laftel is the last island, but um, the island where the One Piece is, where the Road Poneglyph's Point are not is not known to us so yeah they really just want to go ham on it and then it starts if I was Orochi just this first sentence followers of Orochi you must now choose if I was Orochi I would already be like wait what wait are you talking to my guys 
Are you talking to my people? But yeah, he starts telling how Wano is this natural fortress and the government can easily reach there and if we expand the production to the flower capital, everything will be cool. And then Orochi is just like, wait, what? <laughs> he goes on to like, it's my territory and whatnot, and Kaido just unceremoniously, and I repeat, unceremoniously, chops his head off. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to draw attention to this. We had shots to the head. We had multiple cuts and lacerations. We had half a, half a face blown. What else? We had amputations. We had ap amputations galore. Yes, yes, we had amputations galore. Never, ever, ever in the story of One Piece, on the 23 years of One Piece, which were yesterday, right on the release of this chapter, by the way, and it's cool that I'm I'm older than One Piece. I feel both a sense of ease and dread on that sentence. But yes, I am slightly older than One Piece. Three years to be exact. Will be three years in three days. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Is Orochi dead? No. Obviously. Like... I saw uh, Arthur from the Library of O'Hara on Twitter just commenting this. It's how fun. It's I, and I'm trying to quote him. These are not my words. It's funny how people are so desynthetized to Oda that we don't even consider the repercussions of of Orochi's dead, but rather how will Oda bring him back? End quote. Because yeah, this guy has been rumored. Not rumored, he has been talked as an antagonist for the Wano arc ever since Zo. Or even before, but probably my memory fails me. He has been talked as an antagonist since Zo. He has committed numerous atrocities to Wano and his inhabitants. He has had deals with the world government, he has his hands in multiple pies, he has a fruit of a mythical beast with eight heads. There's no way a coward like this will just die from this. And if indeed this fruit is the key to his revival, it will seem very odd how Kaido did not see that coming. Kaido knows the fruit he has. Or even if he never saw it personally, rumors would reach him. Like, take that, take that accident in, in the banquet he had a few chapters back. A few, I say a few, but a, lo a long time ago. Where he transformed into the Yamato no Orochi to kill Hiyori. News of that would have reached Kaido if he had never heard that Orochi had that fruit. So, I, no one believes Orochi is dead. He can't be dead. He has too much to answer for. I want him dead. I do. I just think it's too easy. And I would love for him to stay dead right at this moment. But, honestly... In this situation, the there's a body, there's a there's a dead does not apply because of the Yamato no Orochi. Like for all we know, like Orochi can do something to have a head replaced with one of the other ones and just sprout another one. Not like the Hydra, because the the Hydra when you cut one off two are born in the same place, but just have one of the other seven replace it. So yeah, Kaido just announces then that the concerns of the Kurozumi and the Kozuki clans mean nothing to them. Now, this is really weird, 
why now? Like this appears to be appears to have been both a spontaneous and calculated situation because obviously Kaido was always planning on defeating of defeating Orochi one way or another. The thing is I think that he didn't have enough power to hold Wano alone without his influence. Now that he has Big Mom on his side, he has that extra advantage and that just allowed him to jumpstart his plans much quicker. Because if Big Mom hadn't come, we could be possibly be looking at a very different situation. So I wonder how much of this was planned in advance and how much was just spontaneous. I, I would really like to know if on an SBS or no one will ask it because no one, no one ever asks proper questions in SBSs. Like out of all the questions in the SBSs, there's like, one that's proper question, that's a proper question, but that's not, there's, there's no proper answer. There's one question about some group's favorite food or thing or color. Three questions about birthdays that are pinned together in one. One or two questions about penises, because for some reason that's a new tradition in, in, in an FPS. And yeah, the rest is just small detail stuff that people appear to notice and there are tidbits of lore and though that just confirms them they're always good to know but there's never proper questions in SBSs and this one's this one was would be a proper question for an SBS but yeah we reach the end of the chapter and no uh, Kaido just once again berates to the samurai and and we get to know that the Mimuari Gumi are there. <laughs> I I was asking this a few chapters back if the Mimuari Gumi were there or not and they are there so <laughs> we we know that they are there completely terrified except for the guy with with the the cup on his hand he seems okay and yeah they plan to turn Wano in the, into a pirate empire <laughs> That is surprising. That is very surprising. There will be one will be no more. Instead, there will be only new Onigashima, and its shogun shall be my son Yamato. And then Yamato and Luffy just come out of nowhere and just start berating to one another. And Kaido, no way that it will happen. And yeah, they gotta save. They gotta save Momo. Someone called the Tobiropu, so the Tobiropu might appear in the next chapter as well. And interesting detail, we see Kiku crying and with a bloodied blade. We don't know if that's ink, or if that's really, really blood, or if that's even Kanjuro. If that's Kanjuro, I gotta say, I'm surprised if Kiku defeats Kanjuro. Unexpected. Unwanted even, I would have loved to see Kinemon defeat Kanjuro, but if it's Kiku, you will not see me complaining that much, I can guarantee you. Now, we have reached the end, this was a pretty straightforward chapter. All things considered, it is a pretty straightforward chapter. Now, its biggest moment being the beheading of Orochi loses a lot of impact because we are already vaccinated to to Oda's deaths. Like we all but expect these not to be proper deaths. Outside the flashback no one dies. So unless this is happening in a flashback, which it's not, <laughs> Orochi is not dead. So I guess we will have to see. Uh, the next chapter only drops on August. Now, there won't be a chapter next week because next week was the original date of the Olympics and then Shonen Jump just marked that day as no magazine day. So, 
There's no One Piece, there's no Boku no Hero Academy, there's no Doctor Stone, there's no nothing, no Black Clover, no, no anything. Which is a pity, but it is what it is, and if this break has been planned for a long time, there's no way they can simply just go back to it, and I'm sure their schedules are already all planned. The only thing we can hope is that after that break we will be back with a three-week chapter release, and hope that we get back to the normal schedule of things because let me tell you waiting one week between chapters is dreadful but it is as it is now next week there won't be one piece but i will try to have a video done that talks about a lot of these issues on the last chapters i have some ideas bumbling that i need to put out uh, some consequences of these actions and yeah we'll see about that i'll try to put together a script for that for next week if i'm able but that's it that is it for today for one piece i'm sorry if i was a bit more uh boorish with my voice today my mother is sleeping on the next room and i'm trying not to wake her up she has worked all night so yeah i am sorry for that i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have please consider leaving a like a comment and if you'd be so kind to go the extra mile hit that subscribe button and the bell whatever the bell does and i will see you guys next time for some more one piece or whatever else you watch in this channel which will probably be kingdom come deliverance because as you as you noticed we finished harry potter minecraft last week and this this week i think i'll double down on kingdom come deliverance and we'll have four episodes of kingdom come deliverance coming each day of the week. I am trying to hold the fort until the fairy tale gang comes out next Thursday. Not this Thursday, the other Thursday, 30, July 30. So I still don't know if I'm gonna have to buy the game or if by some miraculous way I'll be able to enter the the reviewer program but we'll have to wait and see. I will see you guys next time and I bid you all a fantastic day. Bye-bye.